Lucan, Ontario, Canada, a small town with a big secret. It was 1880, the Donnelly House. This was the blood-soaked site of a massacre. Here a family was murdered when fear and ignorance led to revenge. Rob Saltz and his family have lived here for 10 years. There have been times in the night when it's been very quiet and I'm awakened by the sound of four distinct footsteps coming from the stairs. And I get up, I open the door, I come back up to check on my son. And I find he's sound asleep and there's no one on the stairs. But it wasn't a dream when Rob's son Charlie first saw the Donnellys. I was playing on the, um, the floor here and something made me look up into the hallway. Um, and there standing in the, in the, in the, uh, the hallway was would appear to be a family, a man, a woman, and three smaller children. And um, they were dressed in clothing that was probably from the 19th century. Their story began in an earlier landscape, far away, remembered through the mists of time. Ireland, 1842, a land of poverty. Here, only the strongest could survive. Irish Catholics felt they were held in bondage. British law forbade them from owning land in their own country. Johanna worked as a maid on her landlord's estate. She learned early that she had to appear to be tough. Underneath that veneer of strength and anger, determination, I think there was a very soft-hearted woman, a little girl, so to speak, in a large body. James was a carriage driver whose secret dreams matched her own. Very determined, and what he lacked in intestinal fortitude, I think Johanna made up for it. I think she goaded him on to not stand for anything. They married and moved to Canada and the promise of land. Here they would stake out their territory in the rough frontier. Land was the impossible dream. Land was the source of wealth, land was the source of power, land was the source of independence, and land was what the Irish wanted. Here in North America, if they cleared the land, they could own it. With each grueling day and each passing year, the land was closer to becoming their own. In this rugged place, Johanna bore seven children. It was a primitive life, but the challenges made her even stronger, and the bond to the land became as solid as rock. They won it by hard work and sweat, and uh, refusing to be beaten. Finally, the land was tamed, and the Donnellys built their barn. Another step closer to the future they toiled for, land that was theirs. Oh, you got strong energy in here. There's really um, a strong presence in this barn. What this spirit conveys to me is that this place was built on a dream, and that everything that they worked and dreamt about is here in the soil, in this place. And they broke their backs to make it work. But James and Johanna were betrayed. Their landlord would only sell them half the land he promised. Half the land they'd sweated blood for. The property they knew to be theirs was divided along this line. The cultivated part was taken from them and given to a neighbor named Patrick Farrell. The division of their land was like a stake through their hearts. This was no better than Ireland. The Donnellys felt robbed. They wanted revenge. They were fighters. They were fighters uh, for life. They wanted to live, they wanted to live well, and they were prepared to do something about it. <laughs> James Donnelly was taunted by his enemy, Patrick Farrell. Farrell wanted to drive the Donnelly family off the rest of their land. 
Donnelly's temper exploded. He fought with the fury of the dispossessed. In the heat of this moment, his rage unchecked, James Donnelly exacted the ultimate price from his foe. He killed Patrick Farrell. It was the first blood to be spilt in this terrible feud. It would not be the last. At the county courthouse in London, Ontario, James Donnelly was found guilty and was sentenced to death. Not everyone in the community agreed. As James awaited the hangman, some were willing to sign Johanna's petition for clemency. James was given a reprieve, seven years in a tomb-like cell. Like the dividing line that had severed his land, Donnelly's feud now split the community. Each family chose sides. Old-time friends became enemies. Johanna was alone on her land, with all her children to raise. She, a determined woman, and a wonderful woman, I think, managed to hold on to the farm. I don't know how she did it, but she did it. She faced years of desperate struggle. Soon, any softness inside her turned to stone. As their father rotted in jail, the Donnelly boys faced constant taunts and cruelty. Johanna knew her sons would have to be tougher than nails. A reporter once said that Mrs. Donnelly would pray on her knees that the souls of her sons might forever frizzle in hell if they ever forgave an enemy or failed to take revenge. If you aided and abetted the Donnellys, you were a friend for life. If you crossed them, either in a real or an imagined way, then God help you. In the Donnelly household, Johanna taught her sons to stand up for themselves. But as the Donnelly boys grew older, they became the terror of the nearby village of Lucan. They caroused and clashed with the authorities. One Donnelly son was killed in a brawl. They would drink and then they'd get started to fight. It was just accepted that you fought. And the constables couldn't do anything about it. Remnants of the saga can be found in Jim Grover's. He's a descendant with a strong connection to the past. And there's one thing he'll never sell. Johanna Donnelly's favorite weapon, her shillelagh. Well, they always said that Joanna was the best user of the shillelagh. She was the toughest one of the bunch, and she would go downtown and fear no one. They said she's gone into the bar and taken on three or four and cleaned them right out of the place. Like, she had no fear. The Donnelly brothers had by now gained a bad reputation. They were unruly and tough, often running afoul of the law. In Lucan, as people hid behind locked doors, James Donnelly was let out of jail. James was about to reclaim his freedom, but he was walking into a wall of ill will. People didn't want him back. All the old feuds flared again. Barns were burned, and accusations against the Donnellys ran high. In an atmosphere of threat and fear, some thought Johanna's toughness was a sign of the devil. Mrs. Donnelly is always brought into it as egging the boys on. They were, they, uh, she's supposed to have taught them how to cut the tongues out of horses. Folklore gets in there. My wife met a woman who said she taught them how to cut the tits off cows. The Donnelly homestead became an embattlement, and the world beyond was seen as a threat. All but kith and kin were now counted as enemies.